okay so hey everybody and today's problem's name is possible bipartition so let us see what the problem states given a set of n people numbered from 1 to n we would like to split everyone into two groups so we need to constitute two groups and each person may dislike some other people that should not go in the same group so two person if they dislike each other you should not place them in the same group okay so return true if it is possible to make two groups out of the given people and by considering their dislikes also so if you are able to make two such groups separately then we have to return true else we have to return false so let us just simply see the example so if n is 4 this is the dislike that one dislikes second one dislikes third and second dislikes fourth so 1 and 2 can't be in the same group 1 and 3 can't be in the same group and 2 and 4 can't be in the same group so output is true because you can see that the two groups are 1, 4 and 2, 3. So you can see that 1 and 2 are not in the same group. 1 and 3 are not in the same group and we are able to divide it into two groups. So how to do this problem? Now, actually this is a classical graph problem and let us just simply see the explanation part where I will explain how are we going to do this problem using graphs. So let's just see this. Alright, so let us first see what a biparted graph is. So a biparted graph is a graph whose vertices can be divided into two independent sets u and v such that every edge uv either connects a vertex from u set to v or from v to u. So in other words, for every edge uv, either u belongs to u and v belongs to v or u belongs to v and to u. You can see that uh, this is the example of a biparted graph. The vertices are divided into two sets. So these vertices are divided into two sets. And you can also say that there is no edge that connects vertices of the same set. So you can see that every edge connects from one set to the other and no edge is there that connects vertices of the same set. So this is what a biparted graph is and let us see how we are going to solve this we will be using a coloring method that you can see here also these uh, set of vertices are colored white these are red okay so let's see how we are going to do this so this was the example that was given to us in the uh, example test cases so first of all what i will do i will construct a graph from these uh, edges that they have given to us so that will be in a form of array list but for the explanation purpose I will tell you how we will be doing it so the vertex uh, the vertex 1 so let us connect it to uh, which all the other vertex so vertex 1 is connected to 2 you can see that from 1 comma 2 and from 1 comma 3 it is connected to 3 similarly vertex 2 so it's a bi-directional graph so if 1 is connected to 2 then 2 is also connected one to 1 so 1 is there and 1 4 is there similarly the vertex 3 is connected to 1 and vertex 4 is connected to 2 only I guess yes so according to these uh, this array list I will be making a graph okay so here is 1 2, 3 and 4 all right so 1 is connected to 2 and 3 so I'll be making the connections 2 is connected to 1 and 4 already done 2 is 4 yeah 3 is connected to 1 and 4 is connected to 2 okay so our graphs looks like this so now in order to check for the bipartition what we will do you can start from any vertex okay and what we will do we will take two colors so the two colors that I will be taking are white and red okay so my first color will be white that I will denote from W and the second color from red okay so what I will do uh, you can start from any vertex I will be starting from one so I will color it as white okay now uh, now what I will do I will color all the neighboring vertex of this current vertex as the red color the other color we just need to use two colors so I'm assigning the neighbors the other color and now you go to any of the neighbors 
and you again do the same thing if the neighbor is uh, colored as red so its neighbors must be of the opposite color so here it is white here it is nothing so we will assign it as white so how we can tell that it is biparted if it will be biparted then uh, no two adjacent vertex will be of same color so you can see that the red the its adjacent nodes are white and white so it is uh, okay if we consider this first node its neighbors are red and red so it is also okay similarly this is also okay so if a graph is biparted so no two adjacent nodes will be of same color and that is how we are going to check whether it is biparted or not so let us see the second example okay so let's just quickly do for the second example also so my colors were white and red and this is our graph that is given to us so i will quickly make the graph as it will be in the array list so one is connected to two and three and two will be connected to one and three and three is connected to okay one and two both so this graph will look something like this okay this is the graph so we can start from anywhere so again i will choose one by default you can start from anywhere so i will assign it as white and all of its neighbors the other color okay so now i'll go on to its neighbor and i will check whether all the adjacent nodes or neighbors have the opposite color or not so you can see that it's one of its neighbor that is three has the same color so if such case arises then it is not a biparted graph all right so you can see that what we are doing we are first assigning the color to a specific node and then assigning the other color to all of its neighbors so what we are doing we are accessing all the neighbors of a node okay so uh, bread first search is more intuitive in this uh, manner or in this theorem so we will be using breadth first search only and what in breadth first search what is there in breadth first search uh, you first access all the neighbors of the current node and then you go to its neighbors okay so breadth first search is more intuitive in this problem and that is what we will be using in order to solve this so let's just quickly code this out so so after that i will take a look and it must be less than the size of the total vertex and i'll be adding it in the graph array so for every vertex you must have a list that contains all of its neighbors so that is done here and after that we have to construct our graph so and i It's, it's just adding the edges in the graph so suppose if 1 comma 2 is there then if it is from 1 comma 2 then there is also a, a, an edge from 2 and 1 so it's just that only so graph of view dot add v and the same as opposite graph of v dot add u because it's a bi-directional graph so for that purpose only I have written it so after that the I will have an array that will represent colors okay so and one thing that I want to tell you that in coding we can't have fancy colors like white and yellow or anything like that white or red that we have taken during the uh, 
explanation part so here what i will be doing is uh, the one color will be one and the other one will be negative of one so actually there will be three colors when the color will be zero then that means we haven't visited that node yet okay and we will assign the current node that we are on as value one and negative of the current value to all its neighbors so if we are at one node then its value will be one and to all the neighboring nodes of that node i will assign the negative of the current value so in this manner we will take care of the colors so now the main loop is there so i must be less than n i plus plus okay so inside this loop only everything will be there so if the color is not equal to zero then what that means that if it is not equal to zero then that means it is already visited so we don't need to do anything we just uh, use the continue keyword here because we don't want to visit it again since it is already visited else i will assign the current node as one because it's the current node okay and then how a breadth-first search is implemented is basically using a queue okay and that will be of the form of a linked list now i'll simply add our current node in the queue and after this we'll have to take care of all the adjacent nodes or vertex that you call as the neighbors okay so while q is not empty the breakfast search uh, we have to do okay so inside this if the q is not empty extracting the current node out of the q okay so q dot remove so we got our current node that we have to work on so now the taking care of the neighbors okay so so what we discussed if the color of any of the neighbors is same as that of our current node then that means there is something wrong and we have to return false else if the color of the adjacent node equals equals zero so if the adjacent node is not visited yet so which color we decided to color it by we decided to give it a color as negative of the current node because it's a neighbor of that only so so this will be it and we will simply add it in our queue because it is not visited yet then we have to add it in our queue such that bit first search can take place so yeah this was it and if you face any problem in breadth first search or if you are new to breadth first search I will attach a link of my video in the description in which I have explained breadth first search pretty well that question is basically just the breadth first search only so if you face any difficulty in breadth first search you can watch that and if you know breadth first search already then I don't think you will have any problem solving, uh, solving it so after coming out of all the loops we got a return true because if it is not false then it's true so yeah this was it and i hope i have explained it pretty well let's just run it error what is the error oh my bad yes hope it runs now again if colors of i oh this u extra oh lots of error today
okay finally so let's just submit it and see whether it it gets submitted or not okay so pretty well we have done 96 faster than 96 percent of the solution so that was it and i'll see you in the next video